Mm-hmm. The, uh, the tabs at the bottom where your hand, your deck, and all that is. Mm-hmm. Okay. The first thing you want to do is get your uh, starship out. Go to the starship one. Take it out drag it to the zone. Okay. Put it in the starship zone. I can't really see that. Yeah, well, if you hover over it, you should see it in the top right corner, the left corner. Okay, cool. Got it. Let me readjust my thing here. I need to... I was fiddling. Okay, got it. So, that allows me to zoom in on that so I can see it better. Cool. Got it. So that's my starship, and it's got power and agility and all those sorts of cool stats on it. I'm guessing it's a small class because of the S, right? That's right. Small okay. Size. Got it. And then, um, I've got 10 planet cards, 50 in the deck, none in my hand, so I haven't dealt myself any cards yet. Right. We'll be doing that here in a second. Okay, first, first thing we do. If you go and search your deck for three crew up to there, go ahead. What to do is right click on the deck tab. Yep. And then go to deal to owner uh, off. My god. And okay, now the blue cards are your crew cards. But you want to pick out a three crew or up to three crew with a tote with um, their cost is that, that top right corner. Okay. You want to make sure that the, the total cost between all your crew that you're pulling out are, I mean, isn't over 10. Isn't over 10. Okay. Um, so, I I think I got it. So, uh, this Relic Hunter has a cost of 3. And, um... This guy has 4. So I guess I can just go whack, whack. Yeah, now you do have, um, there's a couple named crew in there, like the unique ones. Okay, and I'm organizing everything because I've got to be really ADD about this. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> all, right. Got okay. there. all right, I think I got it. So that's my that's my three, and all of, all of those total up to ten. Right. Okay. I'm still looking. Oh crap! I need to fix something. Hang on, I'm not playing Dark Souls. <laughs> 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 that is an incorrect thing. Uh, let's try. That might that might mix some people up. Try and there we go. Card games, perfect. Thank you. Okay. God, my bad. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. What, what were you saying? I was distracted. Alright, so we've got our crew out. Ten total. We both live here. Oh, one more thing you gotta pull out. Um, the gray card. You'll see one of them in your deck called a cordial. It'll have a lot of text on it, probably. They're attached to your ship. Okay, it's called a what? A cordial. Um. Okay, you did say it has a lot of text on it. I'm looking for it. It's a gray card. A gray one. Yeah, there's two different colors of gray, though. Well, you got a black one. You got black, those are the creature cards, and then you got gray, the white gray. Ah, oh, okay. Got it. So we got... It's one of these lighter gray cards. Yeah. That's a pistol. That's shotgun. That's uh, sword, I think. Okay, I've got this ruby and unrefined and for unrefined jewel. That's one of them. You gotta find the four. The one with the four. Cordial. Cordial. Okay. Uh, 
for. Uh, there we go. Topaz Core Jewel. Got it. Back to your ship. Okay. Oh, you want to swap it around, um, so that it looks like, you know, my cards are facing, you know, kind of my direction and not all facing your way. Um, go into your preferences and on appearance, um, you'll go to their, down at the bottom it says card appearance preferences. It says a card, a opponent's card. On the table, always face you. Uncheck that. Okay. Think I did it. Yeah. Now all your cards are facing me. Facing you. Yeah. Got it. That that'll that way you'll see the way I've got my card lined up. My uh, the dual card lined up with the tip. Okay. Basically overlay on each other. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. And I'm guessing the core jewel uh, like powers up the ship, so you add the stats yeah. together, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me move these to enunciate that. Enunciate. There we go. Okay. And then uh, right click on the deck tab, and then uh, the to all none and shuffle. None and shuffle. There you go. Okay. Now we can start. <laughs> Okay. So first thing we do is we we roll uh, two d six. All right. So you got seven. I got a five. I actually can't see the numbers. Huh? Uh, I, I clicked roll d six, but I don't under I don't see where the d six is. Cat, cat window at the very bottom. Oh, dang it! It wasn't scrolling. Okay, oh. that makes way more sense. Thank you. Okay. Five uh, and two. Yeah, okay. So you got a seven. I've got five. Now what you do with that is you add plus two for every crew member that you have. You're going to only add up to a plus six. So basically, like, you get an extra max die roll. Okay. Okay. So your total, uh, your total would be 13. Okay. So six for your crew and then... The seven, and then click on your AP bar on the left side, and change it to thirteen. That's your AP. That'll be your AP for the round. AP bar on the left side, and change it to thirteen. There you go. Done. Got it. So those are your action points for the entire round. No oh dear. You go through one round. You spend those points to play creatures, play crew, play equipment, all kinds of stuff. And then at the end of the at the end of the round, it'll reset and we will roll die and you kind of go through it again. Okay. So that's your yeah, basically your point generation. This one round. Okay, since so you got the higher roll, it also means you get to go first. So first roll, um, both drop the six cards. Okay, so I go to the deck and I guess I you just hit the draw button. Oh, there's a draw button. Oh, there's a draw button. Ooh. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five. No, wrong draw. That's the that's the phase when you're clicking on. Oh God, what did I do? Go. So you are the D six roll is right next to D six. Oh, that one. Okay. So how do I undo that? Uh, it's fine. What you did is fine. It didn't change anything. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Okay, got it. Now you got a hand. One more. Six cards. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. So that's your. The cards in your hand is what you'll be playing with. Uh, you, they've all got the cost in the top corner. Those are basically your AP costs to play them. Alright, so we go into the barter phase. Barter phase is basically, um, you know, you buy and sell, you buy and sell your equipment, hire crew, things like that, and you can repair your ship there as well. Okay. Um, so, if you have you know, any equipment that you think you can play, um, since you go first, you can go ahead and try and play it. Like, if you got a weapon or anything like that, you can try and equip it to your crew. Okay. So, you'll do you'll you'll play one card first, and then it'll switch over to me, and I'll play a card. We'll keep doing that until we both pass. And we pass, both pass because we're going to Um, okay. So, it's my turn, right? Right. And I can play... The only thing you can play here is equipment and more crew, but 
your ship size, your ship crew size, if you look at the ship, you've got a crew of three, so you get that as many crews you can have them. Okay. So, I, the only thing I can play is equipment because my crew is maxed out, right? Yeah. Okay. So, well, I, you can play another crew if you want, you just have to discard one of your first crew. Yeah. You have to fire him. Give him yeah. the Donald Trump treatment. Um, there we go. So I guess I can play that, right? Yeah. So you're going to equip it to one of your guys as long as it doesn't go over the equip number. So the cost of the card cannot go over the equip number on the floor you put it Okay. So that one will work on your guys. So yeah, it's two, and then... All right, cool. Neat. So he has focus goggles. Can I equip another thing to another dude? Yeah, um, I'm gonna. It's my turn first. So first off, you have to remove, reduce your AP by what your cost was. Okay. Uh, so I take minus two off your AP total. Like that. There you go. Yep. Okay, done. Okay, I think I got it. Okay. So, my thing now, let me see here. Okay, so my turn. I will be playing something else to do. Power Okay. Did you say power aid? Oh, power wrench. Power wrench, yeah. Okay. Got it. So you have a power wrench. What's that do? One HP to your ship at the end of each ship battle. I should probably read actually what these cards do. <laughs> cool. Oh. Sorry, one more thing that we do have to do during this phase is we have to name who our captain is. Okay. Now you see the captain button next to the dice button? Yes. So you have to nominate who you want your captain to be. Basically, the, the captain is you, for certain characters, um, they get bonuses, like some of the main characters on here, the unique ones. They get bonuses for being named as the captain. That's one of the, the stat bonuses and stuff. And then, um, if your captain happens to die while you're going through your travels or something, it causes the rest of your crew a morale loss. And then they'll lose minus one of their basic stats, their combat stats. Alright. So, I set um, my Dargan. Dargan. To be the captain because he has the cool focus goggles, so I guess that would give him priority over everyone else. Yeah. Um. Okay. So is so, it? That was my turn. Um, oh, okay. I didn't go out of turn or anything naming my captain on your turn, did I? No. No. Because we're supposed to name, we're supposed to name the captains before we even started this. After we played our crew, you're supposed to name the captain. But during the barter phase, you can wait who you want to be captain at any point in the, in the barter phase. Okay. As long as you do it, as long as, but you know, once we move to the next phase, you can't change the captain. So. All right. Got it. I think. All right. Um. So that was your turn. Yeah. I'm guessing it's my turn. And I can equip something else to someone else. So I'm going to equip this to that. Um, actually, I could probably do better and equip that to that. So I can make sure he's encumbered just just so, and then yeah, so, uh, the gloves basically 
there's there'll become a time where the crew will basically fight each other, and the defender is the one who usually gets to pick who fights you, who in that case. So so those blows basically make as the attacker if you're the attacker, you get to choose who you fight for that one trophy. Okay. That's basically what that does. All right, but I equip that to that, so I'm gonna subtract two from my AP. Okay. And uh, then I don't have anything else to play, so I will pass. Okay. And I don't have anything else to play, so well, I've got, I've got other gray cards, but they're not. I don't think they're equipment. They're creatures, I think. Yeah, and those you'll play when we get to the exploration. Okay. Alright, so we're both probably done here then. Alright, since you rolled the higher number to begin with, that means you're the starting player basically. So what you'll do is go and shuffle your planet deck. I need to do that for mine too. Shuffle. Okay. And then play the top card of your planet deck into the planet zone. Planet zone. Yeah. You're the only one whose planet. Since you're the starting player, your plan is the one that we go to first. Okay. Okay. And then at the end of this round, we'll switch it. It'll go back. It'll go to me. We'll play my planet card. And we'll just kind of go back and forth like that. Okay. All right. So we'll go to the flight phase. Now, flight phase, basically, there's a couple things here. This is basically where we do the starship on starship battle. Now, your starship, um, you'll notice that you've got the... You've got, you know, your stats in your starship, but you, but the weapon that's a tech, that's equipped on your starship, you you know, it has its own separate power rating. Uh huh. Okay, well, that's basically when you use that weapon, you'll be substituting your ship's power for the weapon's power rating. Okay. Uh, okay, I think I understand. All right, so um, I'll leave it up to you, and and the thing here. If you look at the weapon, it has the, the two and the D. The um, the two stands for the cost to use that weapon to, to fight. So it'd be two AP for you to be able to attack with it. Okay. And then the D is for a direct attack. There's two different types of, of attacks with starships. You got direct attacks and indirect attacks. Um, I, I don't think I have any weapons because I don't I don't really understand what you're talking about. <laughs> Look at your starship. Yep. The description on it. Ship gains plus one to power when ramming a something something. Oh, okay, got it. Beam cannon 2D, got it, that got is, it. That's your, ship, that's your ship's primary weapon. Okay. Okay. So, using that, you see the, you see the 2 and D, so that your, your cost is 2 APU, and then it's a direct, atta- it's a direct attack. Um... Basically, the difference between direct or oh, if let's do one scenario here, we'll just do a kind of a practice so I can see how that works with a fight. Okay, so say you're going to attack him with the beam cannon. Okay. All right. So the way we we start off with fights is we do speed rolls. So you what we do is we roll we both roll a d6, compare that number to your speed roll to, to what are your speed values. Okay. If you meet or beat whatever my score is, then you hit. If you don't, then you miss. Then it's you know, an extra successful attack. Okay. Okay. And if if you do hit, then we we do another roll, the power roll. Power roll basically your damage roll. And then you do the same thing. You can you roll a d6, add your power to it, and then compare it to each other. And if you're Power hit is greater than my my roll. That's how much the, the difference is. How much damage you get? Okay. Okay. So let's roll. We'll we'll roll and I'll and I'll show you how it works. Okay. So roll it. Roll your d6. Okay, you roll the one. So in this case, you would have missed. So I've got a five. I've got a. A five speed plus the one from the core jewel, and then the two from my dice mode. So I got a uh, eight total. 
and then yours was your five speed plus your one from your jewel, and then your one die roll. Yeah. So you, you only had a seven. So you yeah. missed. Okay. Now, the other thing is for a direct attack, on a, on a direct attack, the defender gets to add their agility bonus as well, whatever their agility stat is. So, I would have gotten to add an extra plus two um, for it being a direct attack. If it was an indirect attack, I don't get to add that. Okay. Okay. So, direct attacks are basically like being, you know, straight fire, straight fire line of sight weapons. Indirect attacks are like guided missiles. That kind of thing. Okay. Cool. All right. You want to miss? Well, no. Let's just say you hit, for instance. Okay. So let's just uh, so we'll go ahead and roll again. Probably not going to do any damage to that one. <laughs> okay. Um, or we'll, we'll say that those rolls were reversed. So you, I would have rolled the two. The two you would roll the six. Okay. So it would have been your power. So your two power per no, your three power from the weapon plus the six die rolls. You would roll the nine. The mine would have been the three power of my ship. I use I use the ship's power for my defense, basically. That's a, you know to block the answer. So I have three power plus the one from the duel, and then a two. So I would have had a six total on mine, and you had uh, an eight total. So you would have done two damage to my ship. Okay. Okay. So that's that's more or less how the battle system works across the board for everything. Okay. Yeah. Now, crew and creatures don't have the whole agility thing, so you don't really have to worry about that being thrown in. But there's, there's other stuff that goes on there. Okay, so for the first round, we'll go ahead and actually skip. Let's go ahead and just skip the actual ship battle. Because it's usually hard to get anything done through the first battle. Um, for the first round with ships. Okay. So we'll go ahead and skip that for now. We'll go to our exploration phase. Okay, now this is where basically you landed on the planet. Um, so your crew is basically exploring the planet, looking for stuff. And I get to play creatures against you that you have to try to defeat in order to get the reward on the planet. Okay. Okay, so let me get to 50. Any restrictions on this planet that look like it. Now you'll see some of your creatures, they have restrictions to ba based on the location. Um, like, I have one that says it can only be played at the ocean, at an ocean, sea, or lake location. And the, the current location on your planet card that you have is a tunnel. Uh, the parentheses next to that, the name. I see. So that's that's the location that you make. So anything that can be played in the tunnels can be played at you know played on this planet. Okay. Uh, and I will start. Playing him. Now you can play when it gets to this phase. Basically, it goes to the defending player's control. I can play as many creatures at once as I want. But once I'm done playing creatures, I can't play anymore after that. So I have to choose how many creatures I want to play right now to try and defend the planet. And then leave it at that afterwards. Okay. So I'm just playing the one, so you understand how we're doing this. And then it goes back over to you. And basically, we you go and you have to try and kill that creature with all your crew. And you're trying to do enough damage to take all his HP out. And then what you do, if, if you're able to do it, you get the reward on the, on the planet. If not, then you basically just retreat, and you know nothing happens. Um, you just forego getting the reward. Okay, so. And then for your first round of attacks, for each of your guys, it doesn't cost them as long as you're using your base melee, as long as you're using your base stats. Okay. 
Okay. I think um, so. So choose who you, choose whoever you want to fight this thing first. I will choose this guy. The Mr. Enforcer guy. The enforcer in the middle? Okay. Alright. So we will so basically we'll we'll roll our speed rolls, like before with the chips. All right, that's high, but because you're the attacker, you you know uh, you either have to meet or beat that roll. So you do still hit. Awesome. So since you hit, we roll the power. We'll roll the damage roll. And you wouldn't do any damage in this case because I had a higher roll. Okay, so I hit you, yeah. but it just didn't do anything. Yeah, you basically just hit his armor and it didn't, it didn't do anything. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then, for creatures, the difference with creatures is that after you attack it, it gets to automatically kind of attack back to three. Okay. So no AP spent any time for, for a creature counterattack. Did I spend AP by attacking? No. Your first round, you don't spend any AP, as long as you're using the base stats. If you try to make a second attack with a science forcer after this, it takes one AP every time you want to try to attack. Okay. If it was a weapon, if you had like a weapon equipped to it, it would be the cost of what I was trying to do. Okay. Okay. So I will get my counter attack. And I hit. So there's another thing that takes into account with this too. The size of the um, the creatures and crew, like my guys are small my creatures are small size. If you're smaller than whatever you're attacking, you get a plus one bonus to hitting. Plus one speed bonus to hitting. Because it's basically a larger target. Got it. Okay. That makes so, sense. Yeah. So I hit. So, um. Let's do power rolls. Roll 12. Click. And I don't do any damage, if you hit high too. These two appear to be having a tea party. Yeah. Alright, now you can choose one of your other guys to fight if you want now. Okay. Um, I guess I'll choose this other guy. So, do I just go, um... Which uh, one, though? The, ca the captain, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because he's got the goggles, so if you miss, you can re-roll it. And yeah. So, I guess I'll roll. And you miss, so you can go ahead and re-roll if you want. And that time you hit. That was worth it. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to power roll. I'm not getting hit anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, apparently he's just guys, Captain McAwesome today. Well, your guys' power is kind of low, too. Okay. okay. All right. So I guess it's, 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 I've got some balancing to do with a lot of the creatures because before I had it set up, um, I had it set up that we were going two planets in the same in the same round rather than just one, and it was taking a lot longer. It was kind of more drawn out because of that. I had to make the chunk too. Um. So the way I've got so I've got to go through a lot of balancing. With the creatures that I've got right now. Because <laughs> a lot of them are just too damn strong. Yeah. Um, so I guess I attack with my other one now? Yeah. Okay. And miss. Great. And I'm counter attack. And I miss. <laughs> Wait, no, I hit. I'm sorry. I hit because I get plus one for being smaller. Okay. Uh, power roll! Yay! Okay, now that time I did... What? I did... You got five, I've got ten. I did five damage to the guy. Um, well, he has, like, I think okay. six health, so how do I mark off how many... So you'll select the card, and then the damage plus one button there in the middle. There we go. There you go. Okay. 
Now, you know, you can keep trying to attack him if you want, or you can just go ahead and retreat. Well, uh, it hasn't really gone well so far, so yeah, I'm probably just going to retreat. You don't really get much for the reward on this. For your deck, I, I see that's another thing I gotta do. I gotta, I gotta make better decks, test decks, because like the planet, some of the planets in your deck don't apply for anything as far as what's in your deck. Like the reward for this one, you get a psychic card. You don't have any psychic cards in your deck. Well, so, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so, kind of ridiculous. Yeah, so it's not gonna really help you out in this case right now. Anyway, I got, I do still have to flesh out the. Um, the test deck, so we'll start her down. Okay, so if you're gonna retreat, then I just discard him basically. And then now it's my turn to hit Storm the Planet, and you get to play creatures against me. Okay, so you're going to a planet. Um. So I guess I play the or do you, no? I wait for you to play your planet first, right? Well, no. You we go to your planet. We go to your planet during this round. Next round, when we reset everything, we go to my planet. Okay, so it just goes back and forth like that. All right. So I I see the planet that I'm on. It's the Rolando with the tunnels. Right. And can I play this one? Yes. Okay. Aerial creatures in general, the ones that say aerial, generally can be played anywhere. All right. Awesome. It's, it's the land and marine creatures that are more restricted based on their location. All right. Well, that's a bird. I think. All right. And it's yeah, kind of very it's angry. Bird, it's, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a lava bat. Lava bat. Got it. Okay, I understand that. Mog bat. Magbe. <laughs> I see. Okay. So he attacks uh and you uh, you pick what you defend with, right? Yeah, I pick I pick that yeah, basically I pick who fights you. Or who starts the fight here. Um Okay, now I'm gonna show you some, some new stuff because my deck is more geared towards psychic stuff. So let's see here. Alright, so that is actually a freebie card for me. Okay, so the way psychic cards work, you'll pay their cost, you declare which of your crew members is using it, it's basically going to be declared as an attack or something, something along those lines. So for this one, my captain is using it. And then you see what it says, right? It says when this card makes a successful attack, the target receives minus one to power until the end of the phase. Right. So if I manage to hit you with this card using my character speed stuff, then your your character gets a minus one to their power for the rest of the character zone. Okay. Okay. So we, I don't actually reduce any AP cost to this because my captain checks my ability. Oh wait, no, never mind. This isn't a hearing part, so I just don't it. Away. There are certain cards that are race, they're race specific. So the, um, like if this was, if this said Kieran above, uh, above it where the, the uh, ability text is. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll tell you, you know, who it's meant for. If it said uh, tier in there, then it would have been minus one to the cost. So it would have cost, it cost free for me, basically. But it's going to cost one, so here we go. Alright. And I win. <laughs> Damn it. Die rolls are not working for me either. Yeah, doesn't seem to be really going anywhere here. So there goes that. Yep, there goes that. Okay, and you get 
You uh, in now in a case like that because of the psychic ability, psychic ability and ranged weapon, the creature does not get to counterattack back on the target. Okay. But that's that's a bonus of having a ranged weapon. All right. So that means so I'm gonna go ahead and attack with my mercenary instead now. So we've got three speed. And I hit you, seven. Alright. Power roll. Yay, damage. Yay, uh, damage. I do two damage. So two damage. Okay. Alright. And... I am not even gonna bother trying to attack my healer. That's not worth it. So, you get to counterattack me now. Okay. And you hit. So we'll do... And you do one damage. Un damajo. Alright. I am going to attack this him again. And a miss. Can't counterattack. Hit. And no damage. Okay. Okay. So you gotta understand the way the basics of the game go. After I get some tweaking going on the power on on their stats and stuff. Yeah, I kind of do. Um, it really seems dependent on on luck so far. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a it's a lot. It is very luck based, but I think once I get the balancing of the cards itself better, it probably will be less reliant on that. Yeah, I would I would like make it m way more likely that hits happen rather than misses because otherwise, the chance of hitting and the chance of missing seems to be like too similar, and games could uh, go on for a really long time just based on well, random luck. Well, the the game itself, this game itself, is meant to stop after you've gone through ten planets total. Yeah, so I do have a limit. Um, you go, you go ten, you know, five planets per person, basically. And okay. Whoever has, it usually it comes down to whoever has the most chakra by the end of that. And as you go through more of it, like you know, when I get a better deck customization going here, because that's the other problem with this too, is the test decks aren't you know really suited just yet, because there's a whole lot more weapons. You can add more. I don't have multiple copies of like weapons and stuff like that. Like, you can have up to four copies of, you know, weapons and things. And I don't have any of that in either one of these decks. Okay. So, you know, you get you need, you get some bigger weapons, some bigger bonus stats for your crew stuff, you'll start hitting the creatures a lot. Okay. So, yeah. So it, it, it really comes down to deck customization. The, the deck customization right now is really what's lacking. Once I get that, it'll probably look a whole lot better as far as you being able to cope with Stuff like that. All right. Okay, that make more that make more sense. Yeah, sort of. Um, since since creatures don't have you know don't have to or can't get equipment bonuses and things like that, the only bonuses they get is from the planet bonuses or from you know their size bonuses. Got it. A, a crew can have you know uh, a huge a freaking heavy duty shotgun on hit two creatures at a time and. To uh, huge amount of damage with it. Um, um, another thing I was gonna say is um, making the core crystal a different color might help. It took me a while to kind of find it, <laughs> and I mean, yeah. I mean, that's not really uh, like. That's also part of the. That's also just a problem with Blackie, because once I get it, we're we're gonna move the game over into the Unity Engine. With the Unity Engine, you know, you can program that kind of stuff into it. Huh. So it'll be more apparent, like. It'll, you'll look at your deck and it'll automatically show what four jewels you have in your deck and just basically select one. Cool. Kind of 
you don't have to go right wing through your entire deck. All right. Yeah, okay, that would be way better in Unity. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So that's that's what our that's what our goal is with Kickstarter is to get get the game set up on Unity, and we should get you know be able to get a good deal of programming, get it set up like that, to where all that stuff would just be automatic. You don't have to go and you know search it and all. You know, this is a manual engine that we're using. It's very manual. So. Cool. Okay. Well, I mean, it seems really fun. It's the only the only problem I had with it was it, it's just it seems like uh, it's way too easy to stalemate the combat. Um, yeah, right now, right now it is. But like I said, that's just a balance. That's just something that I have to balance with every time. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um. Well, uh, is that pretty much the end of an entire turn, and you just start from the draw phase um, again? And uh, well, what will happen? Okay, so I'll go ahead and say I retreat. I'm not really worried about the reward. Now, so you would read this part of your card. Now, when we retreat from the planet, um, can you see the radiation on the on the planet. Radiation on the planet. Radi- none. Yeah. It says radiation. None. Yeah. There's three radiation types. There's actually going to be a fourth type when the game is done. Um. You've got uh, no radiation, medium radiation, high radiation, and then the, the new one will be the extreme radiation. <laughs> Basically, um, when you leave the... Yeah, yeah extreme. <laughs> Cautionary radiation. Stay away from the freaking planet. <laughs> um, it's... Radiation plays a big part in this game. Like, you'll notice that some of the creatures themselves do radiation damage over normal damage, and the crew themselves have the, the resist um, stat on them. Mm-hmm. The RAF, that's the radiation. So you've got no radiation, half radiation, you know, half 50% ra- resistance or 100% resistance. Oh, those are percentages. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so 100% means you never take radiation damage. 50% you take half, of, half the damage that would normally be done to a zero. Uh, a zero resist. So, with the planets, a lot of the planets are, re- are, are have this different radiation on it. And when you go to the planet, you'll you know you gotta you'll end up being affected by the radiation by the time you leave the planet. So, if it has a medium radiation, anybody with a a medium radiation is anybody with a, a no resistance in it gets a radiation point when they leave the planet. Um, a high one is two radiation points to no resistance, and one to a, a, a half resistance. And then the extreme is going to be three to a no resistance and two to a half resistance. Okay. So that's the way it works. And I, I, I can show you one of the creatures in my hand, like this guy. Where he says he does radiation damage instead of normal damage. Yeah. So you get a crew that fights him. He doesn't have to worry about him counterattacking back on him because he can't do any damage. Oh. So. There needs to be a, um, this is my input. There needs to be a weapon that you can equip to, uh, creatures that don't take radiation damage that allows you to steal creatures <laughs> and tame them as pets. There actually is a card that does that. That's awesome. It's, it's called Escape Cargo. It's one of the action, the, the green action cards. The, the green cards come in two varieties of action cards and then psychic, psychic action cards, basically. Action cards basically get played um, what you know, based on what the text say. So some text will say you play it only d- during the barter phase or during the step battle, things like that. So there, And there's one called an escape cargo, which is you basically, during your crew battle or something like that, you can pull it out of your discard deck and play it as though it's one of your crew decks. And then there's another one um, where the with the psychic card, basically it's the same thing. If your your psychic character turns into a creature, turns into the shape of the uh, of one of your discarded creatures for that round, basically for the attack. So he would gain all the bonuses of the creature besides his health. So cool. There's, there's quite a few mechanics. 
Yeah, that that sounds like it could, it could get into the territory of mounts and stuff too. Maybe, maybe an expansion pack. I, 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 I would kind of stay away from that for right now. I mean, maybe <laughs> one of the expansions. Yeah. I mean, my next expansion, I've already got an idea of what I'm. The the first expansion of the game, I've already got an idea of uh, um, who you know or what. I already know what new race type I'm adding to the deck because the current current uh, current game has. We've got humans, Gistrin, um, Tagrock, the Dargan, the Valdez, the Kirin, and the Nat. Those are all the races. They all have their own. They all have their own special things that they that do better than one of the other races, kind of thing. Do you have like lore for all of these different things? I I I did. I lost it, so I have to rewrite the whole thing up. <laughs> I re- I imagine like when I saw Dargan, I instantly thought of them being really derpy dragons. <laughs> No, <laughs> no. Darks are actually a feline-like race. Oh, they're 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 a genetically altered race that basically came out looking like a bunch of they're cat people basically. Okay, they, they look they look closer to like a lynx race. So more, uh, so kind of half half world sort of thing going. Yeah, got and, it. Uh, so those are those are that's one race. The human and the distance. The distance are are actually humans. There are humans that were raised around the Jetsun radiation, so they're immune to, get to the radiation naturally. Uh, they're, the, the whole premise behind the game is basically on humans trying try to mine out a planet. So the planet was called Disrandu. And the reason it was called Disrandu was because the mineral on the planet, the the, the base mineral on the planet was a, was a really precious resource, but it also let out a radiation that they weren't aware of at the time. And over time, it actually made people go crazy. <laughs> they, they, they made people go crazy, paranoid, all kinds of stuff. Oh no, that sounds they awful. Up, they up, so and basically by the end of it, they get so nuts, they end up making a super weapon that kills their own planet. So... <sighs> The, the planet explodes, the, a bunch of the, and with it, when the shards of the planet exploded, basically, the radiation followed those stars everywhere, so it spread across the galaxy. So now you got all these planets that got hit with this different radiation that are poisoned by it, and that's why when you go to the, and so that's why when you go to the planet, you get crazy creatures that are fighting. Jeez. Basically. Yeah. So, that's the whole premise behind it. That's why it's called this. Well, that is awesome. That's a lot of information taken. I'm sorry at first I was like <laughs> I was I was really overwhelmed. I was like, "Oh my god." Yeah. <laughs> so many it's, things. It's, it's a concept that came up with 10 years ago. And believe it or not, I came up with it 3 days. <laughs> it <laughs> After after kind of fiddling with it, I sort of like it. But at first, I was like really the amount of numbers and uh, and stuff. I was like, oh god, what am I doing? It, yeah, it's um, it looks complex when you first look at it, but once you actually dig into it, it's still find it easier to get into after that first. Time. Yeah, it's like it's like you have everything really written out to sort of idiot proof it. Like, like, there's no underlying rules. Everything's written on the cards, and and I kind of I I understood that after a little while, and I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. So, um, that uh, I think that's pretty much. Uh, I I feel like I've gotten a gist of the game. We can come back to um to uh play another few rounds later if you want, okay. and um. Once you've got the decks fleshed out and balanced better, we can do uh, updates. But I've got um, a pretty decent idea what's going on here. And uh, I hope the video comes out okay because I've been having really bad luck with videos lately. Well, um, and, you know, just to finish out, basically we're at the end of the round here. Um, when you go back, to, to basically we go to a return phase, you go... Back to your, back to your, uh, basically the, the space colony is where you begin from. The, the barter phase is basically like you're on a space colony marketplace. Okay. But that's, that's basically where you're going back to, is the, the space colony of the Star Trek. So all of this is basically like a Star Trek episode, every round. Yeah. 
Kind of, yeah. Got it. Yeah, you can call it that. Um, and then when when you return, everybody loses one point of death ra- of the radiation. So if, you know, if you got a bunch of radiation points, at least goes away. Um, that's something I didn't explain to you too. Is the, the point of the radiation mark on this? Is when your radiation when your radiation total hits your max your max HP total, your crew member goes crazy. So. Oh jeez. Yeah, so they go crazy on you and basically become a creature that you have to you either have to fight and kill them or leave them on the planet kind of thing. <laughs> uh, or find a way to remove the, the radiation from them while you're fighting. Dang, that's that's rough. I like that. That's really cool. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And if you end up having to leave them, you know, on a planet or something, well, when you do, they also take a couple points of your ship out with it. Okay. So they went they went nuts in your ship, destroyed some parts, and then took off. <laughs> <laughs> they stole the fry cooker, <laughs> not the Mister Coffee. <laughs> He literally went cuckoo for, co- cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, and that was the last we ever heard of him. Sad day. Um, awesome. All right. I, I, is that pretty much everything um, that you wanted to yeah. show off? That Yeah, that's pretty much the way the game runs. Cool. So, All right. You, you got the, the basis of it down. <laughs> All right. I will do my best to uh i will have this up as a video on my youtube channel and i will ask you for a link to your kickstarter that i will put in the video description um and then any other information you want me to add in as as of that point i will get to when i get to but um i have no idea how long this is the stream has been going well and and, um i've also got like these current cards these are kind of the base. This is, you know, the, the base setup that I have right now that I have the prototype. Um, if you actually look at my new textures, the new card textures that I currently have, it actually looks a lot better. Like, if you look, you'll see them on the um, on the Facebook page. Okay. The game. There's uh, a bunch of cards on there with the with the new textures and stuff. So you'll see what the what the new cards will actually look like. They look a lot cleaner. Yeah, yeah. I kind of assumed that all of these were just base placeholder things, just yeah. for the, figuring out the mechanics. That, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I assume that. My first thing, my the first thing I'm going to do with this game, so I'm actually going to turn this into a physical game. I mean, I have literally um, the cards on here are actually sized to the way a um, an actual playing card would be, because I actually printed all these every card that I have created right. Uh, right now out at one point and was able to slide them into um, the card protectors and play in a real life deck with them before. So I've actually had the chance to do that. So I was I meant to originally make this game an actual physical game first before I took it online. But with Unity and Kickstarter and all that stuff now I decided it's probably best to just go ahead and start with the online aspect first and get it going that way. Okay. So Cool. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me. Um, I will do my best to get this up as soon as possible, and I will see all of the rest of my subscribers and streamers and whoever else watches this next time or hopefully in the future. So, all right. Thank you for joining me.